Okay, hi, uh, welcome to the, my presentation on uh, IndieCert. Um, I uh, had a bit of a cold in the last couple of days, so maybe I'll sniff a bit once in a while. I'm sorry for that. Um, so a little bit about me. Uh, I work uh, professionally on uh, SAML Identity Federation, so I do know uh, something about federated identity protocols and how to authenticate in uh, decentralized uh, ways. Um, I wrote an OAuth 2 server and client, and I started working on IndieCert uh, after finding about out, finding out about IndieAuth. Um, does anyone here know anything about SAML or OAuth, or is it all new to all of you? Anyone ever heard of OAuth 2.0? <laughs> okay, three people, four. Okay, interesting. Um, I'll try to explain more details, and if you cannot follow, just ask a question or interrupt me, and then I can maybe explain this uh, particular ID better or differently. So um, IndieCert uh, is based on the idea of uh, IndieAuth, and IndieAuth is a decentralized authentication mechanism where you do not need uh, a central service like uh, Facebook. Um, many sites use Facebook Connect to uh, authenticate users, but in this case uh, it will be much better, or at least I think it's much better to use a decentralized uh, mechanism where the user is in control of their uh, authentication. Uh, and what IndieCert, uh, what, what is new about IndieCert uh, compared to any auth is the use of client certificates, which is, uh, has been available for many, many years, basically since the introduction of the browser, but uh, almost no one uses it. And that's a shame because it's a really interesting uh, technology and also quite secure once, uh, if you implement it correctly, that is. So a little bit about the uh, IndieWeb and why uh, why I'm building this actually is um, the idea of the IndieWeb is that every user has their own homepage uh, with with an SSL certificate, preferably. So uh, you uh, run your own domain and you have your own uh, hosting arranged, and um, so you're in control. You're not depending on other uh, people or big corporations to uh, give you a, a web page or a blog. So that's basically the principles of the IndieWeb. Um, there's a, a wiki uh, dedicated to this kind of uh, technology, and um, it's an Indie WebCamp uh, website. The link is there. So, and then the one particular interesting uh, thing about this uh, Indie Web is that there's an, a decentralized way to authenticate. Uh, basically, you use your domain name as an identifier to log into various services around the internet, and um, so that, that gives you the option to use the same identifier everywhere in all the services. And uh, it also gives you the option to have uh, one, one method of logging in. So as a website that wants to support IndieAuth, you would uh, implement a protocol and then uh, it will be up to the user to decide who they will trust for their uh, authentication. So for logging into this particular website. So in addition to Facebook, you can have uh, GitHub or Twitter, while the, the site that wants to, to authenticate the user doesn't have to implement all those uh, protocols directly themselves. So how does it look, for, look like for the user? It's basically this. You just uh, type in your domain name at the relying party or client that wants to uh, authenticate you. And then the the in the auth client and service will take care of the rest. So you can use your domain name basically as an identity across the web. I'll go into a little bit more detail now as to how this works. On your homepage, you will just uh, put a number of different authentication sources that you trust to uh, uh, yeah authenticate your domain basically. So initially, uh, IndieAuth supported uh, a number of different uh, mechanisms, for example, GitHub or Twitter. If you put these tags on your own homepage, uh, IndieAuth will know that uh, it can ask GitHub to uh, authenticate and then verify that that uh, account belongs to you. 
And in that way, you will claim your own domain name then, basically. You know. So the relying party will know that uh, you authenticated with this account, so it must be your domain. So you can use it as an identity in the service. So that's what you do. You just mentioned the identities on your own homepage. Um, okay, so once you indicate the sources of your uh, of providers that can authenticate you, um, you can also indicate which service you trust to uh, validate this identity information. So as a domain owner, you can choose this. So here's two examples. One is using the Indio service and the other one is the Indio third service, uh, where I will talk about uh, in a second. One of the problems with the Indio auth is, uh, is that you still depend on GitHub or Twitter or Facebook to log in, although the, um, the mechanisms are interchangeable. So if Facebook decides to close your account, you can still use Twitter or GitHub to claim your, the same domain name, basically. And so the idea was to remove this uh, liability of the dependency on third parties by using uh, client certificates. And using client certificates would also get rid of using passwords at all for logging in, which is also a nice benefit. But yeah, if you use a client certificate in, this is a Firefox example, you get a really confusing screen and like, what am I supposed to do? And what is all this information here? So that's a bit of a usability uh, problem right now. Uh, luckily, in uh, in Chrome or Chromium, it's a little bit better, but yeah, still it might be confusing to the user. Like, should I press OK or not? Yeah. So that's a usability issue with uh, client certificates that has to be solved at some point. So if we would just ignore this and um, see, look at the benefits of using this. The, the credentials are actually stored in the in the browser and or in your operating system, depending on your uh, browser or operating system. Uh, you don't need to use passwords anywhere. The certificate is just available to your browser and it can be used to authenticate everywhere. Um, there's also no need in, in this kind of setup, there's no need to have a, a signed certificate or at least it can be self-signed. So you don't need to pay someone to verify your identity can just be any uh, any self-signed certificate. The only thing that's important is that you can uh, prove that you own the key that belongs to the certificate or the private key that belongs to the certificate, which is taken care of by GLS for free, so you don't have to. What happened? Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> Anyone knows what's going on? Ah, it's back. Okay, so TLS takes care of the proof of private key. But uh, if you install it in Firefox or in Chrome, then it doesn't, you don't have it on your mobile device. So you would have to copy the certificate to your other devices or yeah, create uh, new uh, credentials. But because uh, IndieAuth supports multiple authentication sources, you can just put all fingerprints from the certificates from all the devices on your homepage, for example. So uh, every browser or every device gets its own certificate and thus its own uh, uh, public key, and you can all list those on your home own homepage. So then IndieCert can verify that you own this private key based on you putting it on your homepage, so you know uh, they know it's you because you proved uh, ownership of the private key. There will be a demo in a while, so then it becomes a bit more clear, hopefully. And so on your homepage, instead of mentioning GitHub, uh, you would mention something like this, and uh, the value here is the base64 encoded uh, fingerprint of the certificate. Um, now a little bit about the protocol. How does it work? Um, see if the 
mouse works. Very unreliable. Hmm. Okay, that's not really useful. Well, the protocol starts at the relying party or the client that wants to authenticate the user. It will first fetch the home page that the user provides in the box uh, in a few slides back where you provide your domain. Um, it will fetch the home page and see what kind of authentication server you configure there. Um, it will uh, then it will start the authentication by redirecting you to the service. Then that will check the certificate or ask for a certificate, uh, ask a certificate from your browser. Then verify uh, that you have the private key. Then fetch uh, your home page again uh, and see if the fingerprint is actually mentioned there. If that's done, then um, an authorization code is sent back to the relying party that then can be used to verify this code and confirm that you're actually uh, logged in. Um, so it would be really good to have the tools available to make this very simple, so to create uh, certificates and use them for this kind of purpose. But it's a bit too soon, uh, mostly due to the uh, bad user uh, interface and user experience. But at least it, it works. For, so for a couple of uh, nerds, it will be fine. And um, yeah, maybe if it's actually being used, then it creates some incentives to improve the browser UI. Oops, it goes away again. All right, maybe it's my laptop. So the benefits are that you don't need a password any, anymore. Uh, you do need your own website with an SSL certificate, configured correctly, which is surprisingly hard. And uh, well, if you have your own website, then you're already an IndieWeb member by default. So there's no application process. Mm. Okay, now it's time for a demo. Maybe some of you would like to follow along. So you can go to this uh, website on your mobile device or laptop or anything. Ah. <laughs> I'll try to do the same here to show how it works. Is it, can you read it or is it? Doesn't really work great. Hmm. So you would type in your domain name here. And then uh, it will redirect you to a page that says that you do not have a certificate installed. You don't have a client certificate available. And it shows you a link for the enroll process where you can uh, generate a certificate and have it installed in your browser. You only need to press generate. And then Chromium in this case will say, okay, install the certificate. You can click here to try to authenticate using the certificate, which will then show the pop-up screen that you can accept. <clears throat> Almost there. Now I need to put this uh, certificate fingerprint on my own home page, so that because I typed in uh, tux.net, uh, IndieCert fetched this homepage, but it didn't find a certificate on there, so it doesn't know yet if I actually own this domain. So if I put this on the homepage, uh, oh, I don't show it now. Okay, this is the HTML of my homepage. I can just add it like this, save it. And now in the background, I will push this to the web server. 
this change. If the Wi-Fi wants to cooperate. Okay, I did that now. Um, okay, so I put this fragment on my homepage and if I press reload, it should find it. Okay, so now it's asking if I want to give permission to the indiesert.net web page to uh, uh, verify my identity, which is here. So I approve that and then I'm logged in and this identity is now verified. Can again log out. Then I'm back here. Because the process, I'm now already enrolled. If I do this now, it will immediately ask for the identity and then I can press press approve and it is done. So that's only a one-time step. So for all services that support this now, uh, you will be immediately logged in basically after you approve it. Did anyone manage to follow along or does it work? Okay, cool, <laughs> nice. Oh. Okay, so there are a number of uh, alternatives. Although maybe I can first ask if anyone has questions about the demo or wants to know a bit more about what they saw. I used something similar at uh, startssl.com. They also use client certificates. Mm -hmm. And uh, a usual problem there is that a browser somehow gets confused and you just get an HTTPS error message and then you have to go into your Firefox setting and delete some security device to fix it. So it seems that this client certificate mechanism has some principal problems that a normal user won't be able to fix. Well, yeah, that's one of the problems with the client certificates, yeah, that the user interface and experience is pretty bad. Also, if you don't uh, approve the login with the client certificate, but you want to do it later, you cannot. You have to restart your browser first, which is yeah, not really great. I'll talk a little bit more about the problems with uh, client certificates later. Any other questions on this particular part? Okay, then I'll talk a little bit about alternatives that already existed before this. Um, one of the most promising ones was uh, is WebID plus TLS. Um, it's using a similar system. Um, I'll talk a bit more about it in a second. Uh, Mozilla Persona Browser ID, which works based on your email address instead of your domain name. And OpenID Connect, which is very similar to uh, Indie Auth, but uh, it's a bit more of an, uh, an enterprise-y standard nowadays. So it includes everything and the kitchen sink. But the kitchen sink. <laughs> so web, web ID and TLS. Um, so yeah, these are very similar and it would be a better uh, like final solution to this client uh, authentication problem. But it's uh, more work for people trying to implement it right now. So it, it would be the ideal end situation, but right now it seems yeah, like Indiesert is like the, in the middle way. So it's like half halfway between username and password and halfway towards web ID TLS. So that, that seems like it would be a good start to make a small step first and then maybe later uh, go to web ID and TLS, which seems most interesting long term. Uh, web ID TLS is not really compatible with anything currently deployed, so every relying party would have to implement everything. And uh, most, most of them already implement some kind of uh, OAuth interface to Facebook or Twitter, which is almost uh, identical to the one required for indie auth and indie cert. So in that sense, it will be a lot easier to start using uh, indie cert than web ID. Persona browser ID uses an email address, or actually it's a verified email uh, protocol. So the servers 
the only thing the service knows is that you own this uh, email address. Uh, it, it, turn, it turns out that uh, although a number of sites use it, it's quite difficult to make it decentralized. The protocol is uh, quite difficult. And many of the implementations only support the uh, Mozilla as the identity provider. So if you would actually implement it all yourself, then it wouldn't really work anyway on, uh, on a lot of relying parties. They would just go to Mozilla and ask Mozilla to verify your identity, which is, yeah. It's not really decentralized in any way. It also requires you to host uh, some software on your domain, so it cannot be uh, like delegated to another part. Well, it can be delegated to another party, but yeah, then it involves uh, lots of things that were never implemented or tested, so that's probably not supported anyway. Um, OpenID Connect is another solution that's quite similar. Uh, it started out as a good idea, but um, it really quickly turned into like a really complicated spec with many documents, and uh, it, it got a bit of a, the SAML feel. That's like many documents, uh, all documenting how to do this and that, but not really making anything must, so it's still well open to interpretation by uh, Different vendors, so it will not really operate will not really be interoperable anyway. So, and it will, uh, yeah, make it very complicated to implement it yourself. Oops, screen. Um, yeah. So, OpenID seems super complex. Uh, OpenID Connect super complex compared to IndieAuth and IndieCert. So. For just authentication, it might be smart to not go this way. So in the auth and in the it's like very similar to OpenID Connect, but it just stripped out a lot of different uh, optional parts. Basically, it's uh, it's quite easy to run your own. It's also quite easy to delegate your uh, authentication to. A, public server, for example. Um, you can switch your identity provider at any time. If you just change the link on your homepage, you'll use a different one. Uh, and uh, yeah, the only disadvantage is that you will really need a, a TLS certificate on your own uh, domain and homepage. Otherwise, it's not going to be secure. So because it's uh, based on OAuth 2, which is a little bit broken, although uh, it's quite easy for our server implementers to fix some of the flaws as shown by this blog post, for example. Although even though it's already like five years old, uh, yeah, five, no, not five, three, it's uh, still not addressed or even acknowledged that there are some problems with the spec by the working group. So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, as for the user experience with uh, client certificates, there are a number of proposals. Mm, one uh, decent one I found is uh, Browser Auth. It's a it's a website uh, created by a Google engineer, although it's not. It states very clearly that it's not official Google initiative, so no guarantees there. Um, yeah, so the number of uh, items that were listed there is that bad user experience, which is quite uh, obvious if you ever used uh, client certificates. Mm, privacy, if you use the same certificate on all uh, relying parties, then it will be quite easy to link the users together, although that's not that different from using the same email address when you register at every uh, site, so in that sense it's not much worse. One of the problems was portability. So if you have a certificate on one device, uh, you cannot really easily copy it to another device, or maybe it's not even possible to extract it, the certificate. So um, you would need to have multiple ones. And another enterprise uh, problem is that if you have a big data center, you have some kind of TLS terminators. So then that would have some... Uh, would have some influence on the trust you would need to have on this uh, TLS terminators. 
So a couple of initiatives by uh, browser auth is uh, to use origin bound uh, certificates. So for every domain you want to log into, you have your own uh, has an own cer uh, certificate. So there's no need for a user interface anymore to ask which certificate to use because there is only one per domain. And if it doesn't exist, it would just be created on the fly. Uh, another enhancement would be uh, to bind it to uh, session cookies. So you would use the, it doesn't work with any other certificate. So if someone steals your cookie, then they cannot use it because they don't have your certificate. Um, there's another uh, problem in, they try to solve is if you have a federation protocol, so that you have some kind of identity provider with uh, various uh, relying parties that you have to somehow uh, convey the information that you are actually own this key to a relying party. But because you're using all kinds of different keys for all different services, it becomes a bit complicated. So they came up with a JavaScript API to solve this problem, which seems a bit weird to me, but okay. All right, um, that was it. Anyone have any more questions or remarks or ideas? Why this is a bad idea at all, or maybe it's quite good, or <laughs> I should just stop it immediately, or? It can be very critical, so <laughs> don't be scared. So uh, how does it work with smart cards? If I want to keep my certificate on something at like the Nitro key that was presented also here earlier, so does it work smooth or not? Well, I haven't tested it yet, but in theory it should if it can store uh, client certificates. Uh, as uh, It will probably use some kind of PK PKCS11 uh, driver to interface with the USB card or stick, then it might work. So there's no reason why I shouldn't actually, but it'd be interesting uh, to try out at least. <laughs> More questions? Uh, it maybe depends a bit on what you want. Do you just want just some sort of identity? This is the same guy as last time. Or do you really want proof that his name is first name, last name, and so on? Uh, it maybe depends a bit on what you want, whether it works or not. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. In theory, it would be possible to only use a certificate and not use uh, a domain name. So you would have a pseudonym only. That could also work. Any more questions? Then there is uh, going to be, uh, for people who are interested in this kind of stuff, there's Indie the WebCamp in uh, Dusseldorf on uh, May 9th this year, where uh, people will be uh, talking about Indie Auth and uh, hopefully Indie Cert if I'm there. And uh, so if you're interested in uh, working on that or finding out more, you can uh, come there and register online. So that was it. Thank you.